the battle raging on, fought by media spin doctors working to shape public opinion on the turmoil. Their efforts have been helped by unconfirmed reports and footage from the combat zone that's difficult to verify. Marie Fenoshina takes a closer look at the methods of Syria's hidden conflict. Clashes in the streets of Syria have been raging for a year now, but behind the scenes there is a media war that's just as damaging as the one taking Syrian lives. Rafik Lot, freelance investigative journalist from Damascus, says he's found what he thinks is proof of media manipulation of the conflict in Syria. In this video from the Syrian town of Homs, the camera focuses on the city's oil refinery. The shooting begins seven hours before media viewers around the world see a pipeline explosion allegedly caused by Assad's army bombardment. You can clearly see that something is slowly burning in the distance. When the smoke has thickened, English speakers correct the camera's position for a better shot of what's going on. They shake it to make it look like amateur video. I know this video is on the Al Jazeera server. It's clear it's not an explosion, but they ignore that and keep on reporting it the way they need to see it. In another video from a hospital in Homs, someone behind camera talks to a doctor. In the corner, we see little Nakham. When you are on air, you should tell Bashar God will punish you and then talk about his wife, okay? Let's rehearsal again. After some 30 minutes of waiting, the crew starts to get nervous. Let's call Al Arabiya, maybe. For how long can we wait? No, we need Al Jazeera. While live on Al Jazeera eventually, the girl will forget some details. God punish you, Bashar, and your children. In this footage, we see Danny, a Holmes activist known for his exclusive reports from the very epicenter of the conflict. He's preparing to go live on CNN. He's relaxed and calm. And there is no shooting until he asks for it. So did you choose a target? No worries, just do it. So what should I say about Haldir? Tell them there are some buildings collapsed and we're taking bodies away. You, you say there could be as many as 200 dead, dead just in the last hour or two? We have 200 dead in the last three hours. In the first half an hour we've got 40 dead. In the first half an hour. And we got the video up on YouTube. The activists who become journalists try to make their shows as hard as possible. The more blood and death, the higher the price. But not everyone is happy about it. The politics of the channel were changing, that the word had come from uh, on high that uh, leftist and progressive voices such as mine uh, were not going to be as welcomed uh, anymore. Obviously, the Qataris have decided to shape the picture of the news a little more than they used to. That's uh, always a mistake. Well-known war correspondent Ali Hashem used to report for Al Jazeera from the world's conflict hotspots, but Syria has become the Rubicon he couldn't cross. He mentioned armed groups fighting against Assad's army, and his bosses in Doha told him he needed a vacation. Ali has just resigned because of biased coverage, he says. Some were like, uh, uh, you know, promoting the, the revolutions in Libya, Syria, uh, uh, Egypt, Tunisia, whatever, and, and dumping, for example, the, the revolution in Bahrain and, and Saudi Arabia. And the media in this is just a proxy. It's a proxy used by, by external factors, by external factions, by external governments, by maybe the West, whoever, to fuel this war. With more and more proof emerging of the international media's involvement in the Arab Spring revolutions, the question remains open. To what extent do they influence events and how much responsibility do they therefore share for what follows? Marif Noshina, RT, Beirut, Lebanon. Damascus is preparing to host a UN technical team to discuss a plan for international monitors in Syria. The group is part of Special Envoy Kofi Annan's peace mission, aimed at establishing a ceasefire and getting talks underway between the government and the opposition. Russia gave its strong support to the efforts and warned against any attempts to derail them. I hope this mission won't be ruined. We have a feeling that every time we manage to achieve some positive change in the stance of Damascus, there's an immediate counterweight reaction and any steps forward are dismissed. I hope this won't be the case of how countries in the Middle East and some Western states treat the mission of Kofi Annan.
It was very strange that two days after his first visit to Damascus, the opposition's Syrian National Council claimed the mission had already failed. We're sending definite signals to Damascus to cooperate with Mr. Anand, and we hope that other members of the Security Council will also demand the opposition does not provoke the escalation of violence and cooperates with Mr. Anand's mission. Dr. Marcus Papadopoulos, an analyst from the online magazine Politics First, says Anand's mission should be hailed for its balanced stance in Syria, but could be undermined by those seeking regime change in the country. Well, I think, first of all, Kofi Annan's mission in Syria needs to be applauded by the uh, international community for having approached the situation in Syria with impartiality in that he's spoken to members of the Syrian government, including President Assad, and also members of the Syrian um, opposition. The same cannot be said about um, the American, British and French governments who have made regime change their policy from the very beginning. As regards what will come out of um, the, the, the time at the United Nations when Kofi Annan relays the findings of his mission, um, I suspect it's going to strengthen, it's going to add credence to the five-point peace plan put together by Russia and the Arab League about a week or so ago. However, the stumbling block really is going to be the permanent members, the, the, the Western permanent members on the Security Council, who have made it very clear that President Assad has to go from power. So. I think whatever Kofi Annan's findings will be, it's going to be limited by the Western response. This is the weekly live here in Moscow. RT with you, still ahead in the program. Hopes dashed to the ground as thousands of illegal immigrants come to the UK to escape a life of poverty. They find themselves in the squalor of the streets. Plus, with Western nations quick to point the finger at others who don't share their same ideals, it leaves some to wonder if it's democracy they preach or hypocrisy.